engineering is a series of basic engineering built around employability and enterprise. Now, we use industrial companies to get across the employability components, and we do that with a number of partner organisations. How many partner organisations participate in this course, and who are they? We match partners of industrial and the schools, so we always have an equal balance of schools and industrial partners. So the schools we work with at the moment are Turriff, Banff, Mintlaw, Peterhead and Fraserburgh. And next year we're going to start working with Ellen. The companies we work with are Slumberger, Weatherford, Halliburton, Sub-C7 and Technip. And coming on board is going to be ACG. So we'll have six companies and six schools working together. How was this course designed and are there any innovative features of the course? The course was designed so that a number of industrial visits would be undertaken, building off initially with health and safety, working through what engineers do, then looking how engineering companies work. And this was so that the pupils would get a good understanding of what employability meant, that turning up on time and things were really important. Health and safety was everywhere. So it wasn't just the college or the school telling them about it, it was actually what's going to be required when they get a job. Can you tell us how this came about? It came about because I was working with a number of companies and they were, they were trying to get more and more apprentices from us and we just weren't attracting people from the schools into apprenticeships anymore. And they look at supply chain, so we looked at our supply chain and really the key choices were made in S2 and S3 as the pupils chose to or chose not to take engineering related subjects. So a lot of the partner organisations said they'd be quite happy to sponsor us to come into the schools, which means that we can now pay for buses, for trips, and we can work with the schools to provide a, a good background, but also it will feed into the companies later on. Well, at the start of every session, uh, we have a number of schools and we have a number of employers, an equal number of employers. We try and arrange two visits for a first year group and one visit for a second year group. Each company takes one school and then next visit we shuffle them around so the school goes to three different companies. We organise the buses, we organise everything for them, it's paid through the next step provision. They're usually taken in, given a safety briefing, then somebody comes in from each of the engineering departments because there are three different um, types of things that we want to discuss like what the company do, what the engineers do, and then finally, what's the next step? What, how, do you, how do you apply to get into engineering? What do you do about interviews? Can you help me with interviews? So the first one usually is about finding out what these companies do. Uh, the organiser will get somebody in who, who kind of has a, an overview of, say, Slumbergy or Technip or Halliburton. Then somebody from the departments comes in. We get them kitted out with, um, with the safety equipment and they, they get a walk around the engineering department. Interestingly enough, we, we visited Weatherford this year who have a rig down, down near the um, exhibition centre and have a working rig. And we've got clearance, we've got safety clearance and insurance clearance to take them up on a drill floor. And for 14-year-olds, that's, that's pretty special. No other school kids in the country get that kind of experience. What do you mean by a supply chain model and how has this been applied to recruitment? A supply chain is when an end user looks at everything in the chain that actually builds it through. This is often thought of as raw materials being pre-manufactured, then manufactured and assembled. But a lot of these HR companies now look at the training and they go back to how we are trained apprentices. So we went to these companies and looked at education into their human resource supply chain. So we went back into schools, right back to primary schools and decided we're the first point in that chain from primary to junior secondary school to higher secondary school to either college or university and to them where it was actually going wrong. And all the companies agreed that it was actually going wrong somewhere around S2 when people were making choices not to do physics, chemistry, maths, the base subjects that they needed for engineering. So the thing broke backwards. So what they're trying to do is increase the pool of people not as a direct employee, but increasing the pool of people coming through schools and colleges who have an interest in science, engineering and technology. A realistic environment. How is this achieved and how often is it used by candidates? Where they work in the college, they are in a realistic environment in terms of health and safety. It's a different environment that they come into. 
if we actually work in the schools, we, we take the college's discipline procedures and the college's health and safety procedures into the school, so we make it slightly different, and that builds up. And then when they actually go on the industrial visit, they see the next logical step up. They all have to go through the safety inductions. They all have to actually then wear the correct PPE. So it builds up to show them that the school, the college, 